Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Roulette of Sadness, continuing with my playthrough of Thousand One Spikes for Steam slash PC. So, it's been a while since I uploaded a part to this. This is the first video I'm recording since I got my computer fixed. Remember, I, I got a fine problem that didn't allow me to record parts to pretty much any PC game, including this one. So, I'm back, finally. So thank you for your patience also. So yeah, this is 3-5. Oh yeah, by the way, from this part on, I'll be doing post-commentary for this game. The reason for that is basically because the game gets really hard, really brutal, and it takes a lot of time to beat a single level. So it would be pretty much impossible at this point to attempt to beat two or three stages in 10 minutes. Some of these levels individually would take me around 35 minutes each. So that's why I decided to do post commentary, uh, show you a few deaths and of course the winner attempt for at least 3 stages or so in each video until the end of the playthrough. Anyway, this is 3-5. I don't know if we actually got to play some of this in the last video when, when we're doing it live. Not completely sure. But yeah, this is all about boulders. And in here, it is crucial to differentiate and use the two types of jumps. Remember, you got two different jump buttons. One for a high jump, another one for a short one. And being able to make short jumps above the boulders is really important. Especially in this part, you have to basically get, there, get in there on time. Timing is also very important, but also quick reactions you gotta be quick about things and in here in this particular level the game requires you to be quick about jumping over the boulders at the right time being at the right time or sorry being at the right place at the right time for example here again it's difficult to make food there let's say and have enough time to jump over each of these boulders in such little space, basically. At least that's the one solution I came up with. I don't know if it is the intended way. It's the only way to get the key in the first place. There. And now that I'm able to do that, trust me, it will become more consistent. It will become easier in a way to to deal with that one part that got me killed quite a few times already. In here the switch is mandatory in order to remove the blocks at the bottom and being able to jump over the last pit and get to the final door, which is pretty much the exit. Again, the, the levels are generally short, there are a couple of exceptions here and there, but in general the levels can be very short if you know what you're doing. And in here I died basically because I hesitated between uh, making the jump or staying there. I mean, you stay there as you can, as you could see, you get killed by the spikes. But if you make a high jump immediately, you get killed by the boulder that is coming down. So you are in a little bit of a dilemma in order to realize what to do in that particular situation. It took me a few deaths to realize that. And as you can see, this part that got me killed a lot at the beginning, I am able to get it through more consistently now. If not all the time. I mean, once you master it, or oh, sorry, once you do it consistently, you master it immediately. You tend not to make the same mistake anymore. And here you have to wait for the boulders and also wait for the right time for proceeding down, basically because uh, of the spikes that are spawning. They spawn on a timer, by the way. They this one is in particular do spawn on a timer. Remember some spikes activate on proximity. Others do it on a timer. Same thing with the statues that throw arrows at you. They work the exact same way. And as you can see, I'm pretty much not dying in this part anymore. I think this is the winner attempt. And you will see what makes the difference between living and dying in that one last jump. 
Probably you guys already figured it out, but it took me a few deaths to realize myself. And the answer is... a short jump, instead of a long one. I mean, if you make a long one, you will die by the boulder, but if you make a short one, you will survive. So yeah, that, that's technically the last level of world number 3, and as you can see, these uh, big temples... I mean, you can also tell by the background music. They are usually empty, and basically this is the room, the temple in which they give you the artifact. And since I already played this before, remember this is post commentary, uh, you will realize that the artifact has a different color from usual. And usually artifacts give you a lot of lives, but this one, since I already got it before, you lose an extra life. Which isn't much, it's basically a single death. But yeah, that, that's what happens. If you replay an artifact stage, assuming that they're, they're gonna grant you more lives, but you lose one instead. Anyway, this is World 4. It's all about the fire, the lava, the pot of bows, making a Mario reference. And this is the world that made me decide for doing post-commentary, because each level, trust me, takes a very long time to beat each individual stage. It's very long. You need to die a lot, you need to practice a lot. It's all about trail, trail and error, sorry. So trust me guys, you will thank me for doing post commentary in this game. Okay, here is all about the timing and the patience. Since you have to wait for the two groups of potables and when you have enough time, hit the switch, get the key and go away as soon as you can. And of course there are traps until the very end, which is, again, a very typical thing on this game. So, for those two, more lava, more fireballs, flamethrowers, and of course spikes. Well, we have to understand that spikes, as well as the statues that throw arrows at you, uh, are pretty much common ground. They appear in every world. Okay, this level actually took me a while to to beat, but I got stuck in an easy part, all things considered. The part that in which um, you see those six blocks that you have to make collapse and go all the way down as the spikes appear and disappear. Well, I haven't even reached that area because I keep dying in easy traps. There I made a short jump instead of a long one. But the more you play, the better you get and the easier you avoid certain traps. And you do it more consistently too. Okay, in this part, I was making the mistake of making the six blocks collapse. The problem is when you get down there, I won't have enough time to make all the other blocks fall and not getting killed by the spikes. So I need to get some more time to make this, those platforms collapse and being able to survive the spikes, which appear on a timer. Remember, some of them appear on proximity and some others appear on a timer, so... But in here you have to calculate. And as you can see, I'm like jumping back to the main platform, hesitating, basically trying to study the situation and realize what to do. But then I realized, yes, you can actually jump back up to some of these blocks that you leave intact, at least for a while, as you are going down. So you don't have to make the six blocks disappear at once. I mean, the idea is to make at least 
one or two stay there so you can jump back up. But that's basically what I had in mind. And I think that should be enough. Well, enough to survive the spikes, but I didn't jump on time from the block, from the falling block to the platform. So I got burning aided. But as long as I leave one of these blocks left alone, it's more than enough to get down there and avoid the spikes. Now I gotta jump on time. There you go. I believe this is a winner attempt. So yeah, that part isn't really hard, and that's the one that got me stuck the most. I mean, you still gotta be careful for the rest of the level. As you can see, there are plenty of enemies that could move super fast all of a sudden and jump at you and get you killed in no time. Okay, here, as you can see, I, I do have to get the key, and I depend on these uh, pillars to do that. So I have to make the proper jump at the right time. Ideally, a short jump. Because if I make a long one, most likely... Okay, that was a long one, I think. But it's super risky, as you can tell, because of the spikes up there. And you also have to be careful, even if there is a single enemy there, there could be hidden spikes or falling blocks like this one. Alright, that's gonna be it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.